Thank you for viewing this screencast. In the screencast, I will show you how to access the Flex curriculum materials for grades 3 through 8 module lessons. If you would like to view a screencast that shows how to navigate our website, or access materials for the K-2 skills block, or K-2 module lessons, please select one of the options at the top of this web page. We will begin on the Flex Curriculum landing page in the Access Materials section of the website. Now we will take a look at the materials included for each module. There are two ways to access the lessons. One, you may select the button that says View All K-8 Flex Materials, or you may select the module under each grade level in the table below. Today, we will use Grade 5 as an example. To access the 3 through 8 materials, select the 3 through 8 folder, Module Lessons, and then your desired grade level. Grade 5 is the second folder. Today, we will be looking at Module 1. Here you will find the four core materials in the 3-8 Flex curriculum. The Lesson Planner, the Teacher Materials, the Student Materials, and the Anchor Chart Reference Document. We will briefly look at each of these to understand what is included and how to navigate them. The first document we will look at is the Lesson Planner. The first tool in the Flex curriculum you have is a document, the Module Lesson Planner. This tool is a guidance document that outlines which part of each curriculum lesson to facilitate synchronously and which part students can complete independently or asynchronously. The first page provides an overview of what's included in the document. Note, at the bottom, you will see a section for the All Block. This is only included in grades 3 through 5 and has been replaced by a, a section titled Additional Work in grades 6 through 8. This 6 through 8 only section includes work that is not included in the recommended instructional time, but could be used during other synchronous instruction, such as intervention, study hall, or RTI to support student learning. All work in the additional work section for grades six through eight teachers and students is optional. We are recommending students participate in 25 minutes of synchronous instruction, live instruction with a teacher each day and we have outlined on the lesson planner which parts of each lesson to prioritize synchronously. Students will also complete approximately 35 minutes of asynchronous work and the lesson homework. All materials for both synchronous and independent work are included in the student-facing materials we will explore later. As a reminder, we are recommending teaching three modules instead of four for the 2020-2021 school year, and as a result, the three selected modules have been expanded to be 12 weeks long instead of the typical 8 to 9 weeks. Expanding the modules allows for additional instructional time for more challenging concepts or for skills that may have been missed in the spring and summer due to school closures. In some places, instruction has been spread across two days and in some cases, there will be completely new lessons recommended. These new lessons are called Flex Lessons and have a different ordering. They will be titled Flex Lesson Unit 1 Lesson 1. However, there are no Flex Lessons in Module 1 to help students and teachers transition to virtual or hybrid instruction. We will use our outline on the left-hand side to help us navigate. If when you open the document there is no outline, simply click the button in the corner that says Show Document Outline and it will appear. 
you will notice lessons we suggest conducting over two 25-minute synchronous sessions are split into an A lesson and a B lesson. You can see this in Unit 1, Lesson 3. Let's go to Lesson 1. Each lesson has two primary pages of information. First, the lesson notes, and second, the daily agenda. On this, the lesson notes page, you will see the lesson overview, the standards for the lesson, the lesson details explaining how to accomplish the synchronous asynchronous split, all block instructions, and the material from the student work that could be used as a formative assessment. Next, you will see the agenda with a split between synchronous in blue and asynchronous in yellow. The blue section is for synchronous or live instruction, and the yellow is for asynchronous or student self-paced instruction. Each item in the agenda corresponds to an agenda item found in the original lesson plan. As you can see in this lesson, students will complete the work of work time A before the lesson begins, as it is in the pre-work section. After the lesson, students will complete a homework task of accountable independent reading. During live instruction, students will unpack learning targets, complete work time B, and be introduced to their performance task in closing an assessment A. As a reminder, the lesson planner is a guidance document, so teachers will still need to review the original lesson plan in their teacher guidebook or on our website to understand the details of each agenda item. Furthermore, teachers will need to explicitly communicate asynchronous work to students, including work that needs to be completed before the next lesson. Planning and student communication will be essential in delivering this curriculum resource. Next, we will take a look at the student materials in each module. The student materials is the first folder you will see. In each module, this folder will have three documents one for each unit. These documents are digital workbooks for the materials in the lessons. Let's look at Unit 1. When you open the document, you will see the key for frequently used icons and colors used to indicate for students when a particular item should be completed. On the second page, you will see the table of contents for the module. This is a navigation page for students to quickly see if they may have any materials to complete before, during, or after the lesson. In the 3-5 materials, there is also an all block section. Students can either use this or the navigation in the outline on the left-hand side to navigate throughout the document. Now, we will quickly take a look at some of the materials of the lesson. Every document students need to complete or reference will have the lesson number and the title of the document. It will also have this learning targets box. This indicates the learning targets of the lesson, if it should be done independently, or if it should be done in class with the teacher. It also lets students know if this should be done before, during, or after the lesson. As you can see, this document should be completed independently before the lesson. As we scroll, you will see the next document is an assignment for the all block. This learning target box is green to indicate that it is to be completed during small group instruction of the all block. 
If we scroll again to lesson two, you will see a blue learning target box indicating students should wait to complete the document with the teacher during the lesson. The final section to bring your attention to is the appendix at the end of the unit. We will select it from the outline. This section is for documents used across multiple lessons. Each document is linked in the lesson students will need it, and there is a corresponding link to bring students back to that lesson. We can see this displayed in the Working to Become Ethical People anchor chart. Students use this material in Lesson 2 and can go back to the Lesson 2 documents by following the link. Note, you will need to make a copy for each student or assign the document through Google Classroom or a similar program to ensure students have their own personal workbook. Next, we will briefly look at the teacher materials. This is the second folder. As with the student materials, there are three documents, one for each unit. If we open Unit 1, we will see that the first page gives a teacher-facing overview of the materials as well as a note for cultural sensitivities if needed. The primary difference is that the teacher materials have the anticipated answers included. This makes the document similar to the teacher supporting materials book or the answer for teacher reference documents on our website. We can, exceed, we can see an example in lesson three. Teacher answers will appear in the answer here box that in the student workbook is blank. Be sure to assign your students the student version or you may accidentally give them a document that has the answers included. The final document we will look at is the anchor chart reference document. This document is not in a folder but is a standalone file like the lesson planner. This document includes shared static anchor charts for teachers to use with their students. While some of these anchor charts may have been co-constructed with students in the original lesson to facilitate hybrid and virtual learning in a more streamlined fashion where students can reference this important information, we recommend sharing a view-only copy with students or keeping this document in a shared folder in your virtual classroom. The document is included for every module but will vary in length based on the contents. This concludes the Flex Curriculum Materials screencast. I hope you are ready to dive in and use these new tools with your students. If you have any other questions, check our FAQ page or, for answers, email the curriculum feedback team.